as we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour, folks. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. You can read Teddy's Tiger Forex report. He puts a new issue out every Monday morning, folks. He puts out updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check it out under the newsletter tab at TFNN. Teddy Kegstat, interesting day. Uh, always Wednesday. Seems like we got some action going on. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We have a lot of holiday reaction going on here from the, you know, we have a four day work week this week. I love it. We need four day work weeks more often, man. I can dig those three day weekends. Uh, yeah. Where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? Interesting. We got so much going on in terms of it seems like we're just barely over the cusp of the, the debt deal. It seems we'll see how today goes at least. Uh, but we're two weeks out from a Fed meeting, man. We got inflation raging. We got some Fed speak going on out there and we got a live meeting, man, where somehow we're now at 60 percent that we're going to get another hike. Where do you want to start things off? Uh, well, I definitely, you know, where I stand on the hiking thing, we're going to be hiking for the next six months. So, uh, but as far as if you look at what happened over from Friday up until yesterday, especially in today with the uh, 30 year bond market and the 10 year, you know, it's showing that we've had a nice little bounce pullback in yields, which is normal considering we've had an over a nine handle drop in the past just over a month, if you yeah. will. You know, so I think right now you're seeing a correction there and it's probably going to make the dollar stumble a little bit over the next couple of days if the, if the yields stay low like they are right now, you know, and we're heading into a Fed meeting. So I, this is kind of like the, you know, right now it's the head fake going the opposite direction before they pull the trigger, you know. So I think that's why you're seeing the dollar index kind of stall on resistance. We had a nice, you know, trade on Friday before the holiday weekend. And then uh, we basically had it was basically unchanged on Friday. Uh, so, and then we have, you know, now what's happened over the, you know, session so far yesterday into today. And I would be, use caution with this market right now when it comes to dollar index. So, because you have some of your majors that are acting, you know, like the yen, for instance, I would be very cautious trying to fade that bull right now. Um, even the Swiss, dollar Swiss, which is, you know, overall, it's a long-term bear versus, you know, the dollar or bull versus the dollar. But right now it's having a nice bearish retracement. So I think you're going to see a lot of action to that upside right now. Um, I think the euro right now is going to be really skittish over the next uh, week or so. And same with the pound also. So be very careful with the two, with those two majors. Yeah, I was jumping around as you were doing that, of course, in the end, man, that's quite a chart. You pull up the euro, it's been quite a pullback from 111 almost to 106, nice, or 107, four basis points. I was, I read your newsletter, of course, every Monday, Teddy, and I was checking out the dollar index, which I know you've given us quite an education, breaking down the individual pairings and what's going on in those. And then, of course, the dollar so critical with the euro and so forth. But I loved how you had in there a dragon doji up there recently was that friday's action and talking that about a bullish a bullish signal could you just talk a little bit about that and even you know what i'm going to pull it over folks uh check out the tiger forex report for report folks this is the chart he's gotten here on the issue that came out on monday and could you just talk a little bit about that because i love that chart i love how you have the correction zones of where we're looking at in each one and i know you are into candlesticks which so many of our listeners love um and maybe just talking a little bit that about the critical swing high i've got the chart up here teddy from the newsletter in terms of what mm -hmm. you're talking about for that dollar index okay that's a great point to bring up you know when i was doing the newsletter for uh for this week i was looking at how the dollar index you know settled on friday and that particular pattern, typically when you have such a long range and you have basically an, a, the same opening and close, there's, you, normally you would think that that's a lot of indecision when, you, when your opening and close is the same. And that typically is the case. But when you have a doji like this where it has a very long leg to the downside and not much of a head wick above the uh, opening and close uh, prices, that typically means it's very bullish. And especially when you come on top of a very long trend, you know, like it has, it's pretty steep going into, uh, you know, Friday's trade and the close of Friday. So when I was looking at it, I was looking at like the, you know, the Euro and the pound and the, and the yen. And you can see, we've been talking about this divergence that's been going on in the uh, currencies, especially amongst the majors. And, you know, normally you would think when you have a signal like that on Friday, especially coming into a Fed meeting, we probably see some sideways action and, and we very well may, you know, um, but I think what you're seeing here is the, 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 the wherewithal, if you will, of the bulls is that no matter how hard you want to hit this market, 
it wants to seek higher highs right now. You know, so I'm not saying that the, the dollar index is a raging bull, but you can see how it reacted yesterday and how it's reacting today. If it was pausing and wanted to have a little bit of a short term correction, we should be leaning on the offer, especially going in from yesterday afternoon into today. And that's not the case. And if you look at how like it's panning out with some of those other major crosses, I think that's showing you how the dollar index right now is it really is right now it's it's basically it hasn't plateaued. What it's doing is it's found that nice little area where it's going to, once it breaches through that, it's going to explode through it again. And I think that's nice. what we're probably going to see. Um, now, because the 30-year and the 10-year have pulled back, meaning yields going down, that's kind of restricting the rally on the dollar index. Now, if all of a sudden you see an offer in the 30-year and 10-year, you know, if it starts trading back down to 126 even in the in the 30-year below that price, then you're going to see the dollar index making new move highs. And I think that's something you really want to watch moving forward over the next week or so as we move into the Fed meeting. Nice. Nice. Uh, and how about crude, man? Quite quite the pullback we got going on in crude right now the last couple of days. We got a 68.51 price point. We're seeing volatility this morning in both directions, man. What do you think of the crude market right now? Uh, I think that's because of two things. Uh, one is we've had a drastic reduction in yields from Friday into today's trading. I mean, a three handle, three basis handle move in the Treasury bonds is a big move, um, you know, over a holiday weekend, you know, with really no significant numbers to uh, make that happen. So the cost of carryover for all commodities is reduced greatly over to pork from just Friday to um, today, you know. So in the marketplace, I think that's where you're getting some of the of the reaction in crude. But I think you're also starting to see the, the reality of the BRICS trade that's going on you know a lot of our allies now are getting around the sanctions and guess what a lot of u.s exported oil is not going to go and find its destination anymore because places that wanted it are buying from the u.s well guess what now they're going to get it from russia and, and the middle east through other through back office deals you know even japan is now making deals with them you know so and i think that you're going to start to see Possibly as BRICS continues to grow, that may be the one thing that keeps oil from really rallying because we're going to have two separate oil markets. The global world is buying oil from the from the world producers, but we're not they're not buying it from us. And that's going to become a very big deal. You know, so I think if that really is the trade that's going on. Oil may see may stay stable. Plus, you got to look at the transports, you know, when the transports get hit, oil gets hit. You know, so that's another thing. So I think as long as the transports are on edge and especially as these BRICS deals continue to grow, I mean, we know Japan just did a big deal with Russia through the back door, you know, so that's a bit they're one of our biggest allies, you know. Yeah. So if that continues, you're going to see the demand for U.S. oil is going to drop, even though the demand physically doesn't change globally, whether it's in the U.S. or globally anywhere else. The way it's being moved and the produ production, especially for the U.S., we've cut production over the last two years. Guess what? Now no one's going to buy it. They're going to buy it from the rest of the globe. That's a big problem, especially for the oil markets. And I think that might be something that we're starting to see. You heard it here first. <laughs> That's right, baby. We like it. Folks, head on over to the front page of TFNN, hit the newsletter tab, subscribe to today's newsletter. I just gave you a glimpse of the report he put out Monday. Outstanding information. What you also get in there is a couple of archived webinars that Teddy did. Uh, just did one last month, folks, talking about the second quarter. He did one back there, talking about the fundamentals in October of last year. You get both of those as well. Check it out. Teddy, I appreciate the time, man, as always. I hope all is well, man, and we'll talk to you next week, okay? Take care. See you next week. Take care, Teddy. Folks, we'll be right back for the end of the show. Stay tuned.